Welcome, Disc Golf fans, to the City of Brotherly Love for the 2023 Philadelphia Disc Golf Open, presented by yours truly, powered by Dynamic Discs. This is a PDGA B-tier event at Sedgley Woods with a modified layout, an event that we've been covering for many years now. My name is Chris German. We have Derek Skoll, owner's a gatekeeper, bringing you the action. How you doing? I'm doing great. I always love being a part of the Philly Open. It's been a long-standing tradition in the city, and we've been a part of it pretty much since we've been in the game. We got Harry Chase on our card here. He's last year's winner. Brian Williams, known as B Will locally. Chris Checkman or Chris Heckman known as Checkman here. He's responsible for Sedgley Glow. We also have a couple other local names here in the top 10 to look out for, Nate Cron being a previous winner of the event as well. Yeah, Harry with a pretty high rating coming in at 10-10 at the time of this event. And to start off, this is hole one combined with hole two at traditional Sedgley, so they're gonna throw from blue. They have a mando right of that tree right up there. You can see the yellow markings, and then you're going to two's basket. So really good par four to start off the round. And a great drive there from Williams. Pretty much exactly the line you want to take, being a righty backhand. If that so stables up, that should be really good, too. Maybe a little further right than you'd want because you do have that dog leg at the end of traditional hole twos fairway. Bradley looks like he's a little early. He's going to get caught up. That is a tough spot. He should be able to scramble for par. And then we have our own Nick Hansen. This is his first time at Sedgley, I believe. And great that's shot. pretty great, yeah. Good finish there at the end. There is OB right over there to the right. There's also OB around that dog leg as well. You can see the stakes. And, and that's playing with it. Very Hard close. Tell. So yeah, far more center than what the T cam showed, leaving him clean approach there for the forehand. He should be. 40. Yeah, just just as I'd circle two. Oh, that didn't stable up. Oh, and little that's... Bit of a, ow, ooh. yeah. Didn't even talk about the OB over there on the left-hand side. Oh, and that's sawed off a little bit, but it does roll to safety. Just a little down that hill. And traditional hole two is... A little more on the difficult side in the standard layout here at Sedgley. So combining one and two here for your starting hole. Yeah, it's a great par four to start out as looks like Harry gets right over that down tree, fell a couple years ago. Yeah, we have seen quite a bit of changes to Sedgley Woods over the years, even just since we've started. Um, really claiming that as our home territory. Um, a lot of storms have dropped a lot of trees, so the lines are changing and seem to be changing every year. Checkman unable to get that birdie. Harry for his bogey. So it looks like he did go OB early on. But as the great Simon Lazat would say, every good round starts with a bogey. Great birdie from Nick. Yes, I do believe weather is going to come into play for this round. You can see Nick already has his raincoat on. There's a couple umbrellas, so it's in the forecast. A couple cleanups. Bradley finding that bogey as well. I will say I do love seeing Heckman representing some Philadelphia sports teams and the shirt he's wearing is one of the merchandise items from 
Sedgley Glow that helps that happen. So this is hole two, traditional hole four from the blue tee pad. All blue tee pads are the short tee pads, and we have yellow and then red. So this one is a must get, I would say, for these guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And this is also part of the original Steady Ed layout for the course. If those are those watching are new to our Philadelphia content. Heckman fading out left there. It's probably maybe 60 feet away. He might have some shrubbery to deal with as That's Harry. That's a smooth shot for Harry. Plays right into that upward slope on the back end of the green. This looks even better from Bradley. Oh, yeah. He's going to be right under the basket. Don't hit your head there, bud. Now, that could be a little risky, where if you play a little short, you could get stopped up because there is that upward slope here from the pylons up to the basket with that ditch there. So you want to hit that sweet spot if you're going to play the ground forward. Those stakes are not OB for this hole. Crazy reaction there from Nick's uh, putter hitting that top of the basket. It's Brian basically putting from the same spot. They must have been right on top of each other. All right, good bounce back for Harry. Chris for his par. Then a great birdie there from Bradley. Another bounce back. So two guys who took the bogey easily and quickly get that stroke back. So we're going to move into hole three. This is the red basket for hole five. Derek, are they going to the raised basket or the lower basket? Because there's uh, two baskets on this hole. I believe they are going to the raised here. So traditionally... Quite honestly, like playing a mid-range off the tee just to hit that gap and have it drift to the right um, is going to be your play. We see Nick here with a sidearm driver. Gets pretty see, low. Up. There's, I was about to say he got lucky, but he no, there's not a <laughs> there's not a lot large margin up for error with that play. Yeah, some of these red tee pads, if you're familiar with Sedgley, are pretty brutal. Uh, Sedgley rates pretty well and plays pretty difficult, uh, especially from these longer tee pads uh, midsummer as well, where the shrubs are nice and lush. So we saw quite a bit of drivers here, but as you can see, the risk reward. Nick gets caught up. He's going to be circle's edge, putting to the raised basket. Oh. What a wow. bid. Dude, that would have been something there. Harry's just going to lay up, play smart. Yeah. Hits the pin there. Honorable bid. Oh, Bradley. man. And that is one of the issues with these very old baskets. There's, if you're high to the side, or sometimes you can cut right through. I believe these are early version of the mocks, maybe Mach 3. Uh, I'm not confident enough to say yeah. one way or another. Uh, I do know that they are, uh, they have some history on them here at the course. Maybe I need to save one for the next drive. Time delay, dude. That's a courtesy violation. That's a stroke. You're down by three now, potty man. What? All right, back at the action. Hole four, 410. Basically a left to right all the way down. One of my favorite holes here at the course throwing a neutral to 
flippy fairway driver as a righty backhand landing right in the middle of the fairway this is uh the cobblestone as they call it and then the green will be uphill with some guardian trees at the front yeah, as you can see there traditional hole 19 red to the standard basket which is funny because it plays as a par four but there's only one par four on the traditional layout of essentially including blues yellows and reds and that's hole 17 traditional so i think this one here is is a par four uh damn near impossible to get a get up there on one shot i think uh i believe it's 27 that you're thinking of 27 is the only par four that's traditional here at sedgley but this one here at philly open plays as a par four and is a par four but if you're just playing casual on U-Disc, this is a par three, uh, which I think is a very, very tough par three. Traditionally, you do have OB. Uh, there is a fence line that butts up against a golf driving range. So if you cross that, that is OB. A miscue there from Brian. See, and even if you're at that uh, short landing area, it's still kind of like a finesse, touchy turnover putt. If you land there where Chris was, obviously the low ceiling there. Yeah, overall, a very tough hole, uh, even as a par four execute two really good shots get yourself up on that zone and Bradley getting uh, shellacked a little bit here with these baskets today Nick in for his par as it's worth mentioning this B tier is two rounds in one day so there this is round one and they're gonna take their break and then jump out for round two I'd say in line with that, something very notable about this event is that it has a really great tradition of having an extremely high payout for a B tier. Um, I believe three or four years in a row now, they have awarded first place $1,000. So a lot to play for here in the city of brotherly love. Hole five, the blender, traditional 20, tight gap off the tee about right about where Harry was there are going to be some mounded uh, fallen trees and things like that so you want to definitely stay high enough to be able to beat that yeah throwing from traditional red tee pad here this is probably the tightest gap on the course I think if that pushes forward that should be great But even with these shots, still very tough to get under the basket, especially with those down trees you were talking about. And they are playing traditional um, OG basket for this as there is a new pin position off to the right for other events. Oh, yeah, dude, see. this whole... <laughs> I just played this course on an event, and this whole from the all basket tore me up. <laughs> Great approach for Nick, but as you can see, it wasn't quite even high enough to beat that. It's pretty common what Harry did there is you kind of push a little too far sometimes because it's such a quick dog leg left that you can just kind of get caught up. There's another one just a little too long. Yeah, traditionally what I've seen work out more times than not is going with a more stable mid-range um, just to kind of prevent yourself from pushing too far before the fade.
Air ball from Bradley there. He's able to make the comebacker for par. Williams losing a stroke to the card. Everyone else taking their pars. So we're now moving to the first hole we ever got an ace on. Or filmed an ace, I should say. Neither, neither you or I have ever aced this hole. But No, I have not even ever come close. Um, uh, I do believe, are they going to the alternate long longer position. basket? Yep, yeah. and that's where it gets even more tricky because there is a lot of OB surrounding the green here. So yeah, we're going traditional red to alternate long. Slight little fade there to the right at the end. So really good lefty hole. It seemed like a little bit of a late release for Nick. Um, if it had hit that line dead center, that would have drifted Ooh. into the <sighs> ideal landing zone. And Chris going a different approach with a forehand, hunting Should that landing zone. Should be in a decent zone. spot, though. Yep. Probably is going to have to lay up from there with that OB being right behind the basket. Down there. Yeah, if you you can start seeing those stakes there now. Oh, Bradley, that was a good approach there. He should be well inside the circle to secure his par. Yeah, and if you give it a little too much, even if it lands flat, it can slide quite a bit. Yes, Chris was a little too far right and pretty tricky approach there. Thought he was a little farther down as Nick. He finds that OB. Yeah. Good putt there from Heckman. It's a good par save. Nick with the dub. Sedgley, like I said, showing its teeth, especially from some of these long positions, as three of the five card members are sitting over par third through the round. Hole seven's another long one here, a two-shot play for sure. Um, just about, maybe about 30, 40 feet further up from where Harry just landed is Ooh. the landing zone, whereas you also have a double Mando um, leaving the woods and leading to an elevated pin position. Pretty dogleg left from this angle as well. There is OB right, but it does look like uh, Checkman got a little f far enough where the OB actually goes away. About halfway down the fairway, that OB that you see on the right does disappear. So it's really only if you hit early. And honestly, it's a good OB because it is a jungle in there. Tough shot for Bradley to even get up the hill for a birdie look and it's going to get caught up early. Should be able to save par from there, but still some work. That was a really good line for Brian to be able to kind of cut that corner off a little bit. He should be in a pretty good position to approach the green. And so, yeah, yeah shows. Harry right about was where I was thinking he was. But again, like that 30, 40 feet ahead, closer to where Bradley is right now would be the ideal landing zone. So you have that more straight shot 
through this double mando. Good shot there from Bradley. And yeah, the double mando comes into play. So you got to hit that gap to the green. So Nick should scoot on up. Uh, and I do believe that there is OB behind the pin as well. Yeah, I would say just outside the circle, or j about circle's edge, as we could see there. So not as uh, daunting as the previous hole. In years past, you, we've seen a lot of people have to play out of that bush that Harry was just beside. Um, and if you're in there, it's a lot of times it's just pitch out, take your medicine, because it's pretty thick in there. Breeze basket as well. Harry getting another birdie, so he is starting right where he left off last year. So far, putting together a good round. I do want to take a moment to thank everyone that came out to volunteer, all the spotters, uh, all the people uh, running the event. Very well run event year after year, and it is all thanks to everyone who donates their time Could bounce back from Nick. We move into, I believe, the lefty hole. That's what they call it. It's this one. We're going from red. It's a nice straight shot to, I believe, the alternate farther basket coming in as a par four. So a gettable par four, but you just, again, have to be clean off the tee, execute a second shot, and should be well inside the circle. It's just getting off the tee clean is the tricky part. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people that underestimate the caliber of golf here in Philly. And for it being an inner city course, I mean, we are directly in the city limits, as you could hear the train in the background on last hole's green. Yeah, very, very technical course, especially on these outback holes. So this is not part of the traditional 1 through 18. So that is a spray and pray for Nick. Looks like he did find a good gap. We'll see how far he progressed. Oh, yeah. mm. That right there is why it is game of inches. The umbrellas are out. The rain is coming down. That should be a great approach there into the green. Got OB long on this one, too. So. Yes. These guys are struggling to get down this fairway. I mean, if you're over on the left or the right-hand side, you it's hard to really get down the fairway. It's not really one of those courses where you can progress easily. The undergrowth is very much grown. Yeah, I would say the expected score traditionally for first round, hot round, is anywhere between six and eight down, roughly. So it just goes to show the teeth that this course does have. Harry missing out on his birdie look. This is Nick for his par. For his birdie, I'm sorry. So he really got down there on that uh, second shot. He found the one gap. Yeah, I thought that was him pitching out a couple shots before, but this guy's doing a good job. Same with Checkman. And we are fortunate to be able to play this position as sometimes if the weather does not cooperate, this gets flooded and turns into a lake. Um, but traditionally this time of season, we are able to play down here. Yeah, this is one of my favorite holes. Straight, downhill, elevation, very technical. You are a lefty. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there is a lefty gap to the left side up there. No one took it. I would say tournament hole nine, the anthill, 
is one of my favorites, and a lot of people may also recognize it once we get up to the green. That That is the hole that is represented on our hardcore shirts. So I would like to hear from everyone in the comments. We want to run another set of those, but we want your help picking the color. So let us know in the comments what color we should run the Philly Hardcore Disc Golf shirts next. I'm going to give my vote, and I think my vote would be green. would be my pick. Like a Kelly green? Yeah. Go birds, baby. As this tee pad, this is a very tough shot here. Go slight uphill. You don't have to bite too much off if you're just, I mean, this is playing for par, really. Unless you execute a perfect shot off your tee, they're, it's really hard to even get up to the basket. This hole also is very prone to rollaways on that right-hand side um, with OB all down that line and a cliff there shortly to follow. Yeah. So traditionally, you want something, you want your approach to land more on the right side so that you're putting back up into the green and have a little bit more of a backstop as you'll see when we get closer. Because um, if yeah, you're like, putting left to right, that's pretty scary. Yeah, just put it on the hill and have a tap in. Is I think Nick might have went past the basket, and that it's very common. Where that is the ideal putting range that we just saw oh, from yeah. Harry, because it was, you know, he was able to give it the bid with very little risk. Nick fights Nick up the hill. He was inches from being parked up there, and instead he has a 45-footer. Right. Oh, Checkman's works out, sits up top. Like you said, play for par. Yeah, you're definitely gaining strokes on the field, getting par here, as we're going to see a couple members of our card take bogeys. Nick with another double, basically erasing those two birdies. So this is going to clean us up and finish out this front nine. Just the last tap in there from Heckman, and that is a double as well. So no birdies on the card, a lot of red. We see some colorful scorecards making our way through this outback or through the front nine quarter way through this event the rain's coming down this is very exciting any last thoughts here no just thanks for tuning in and we look forward to bringing you the rest of this event and many more to come so thanks for following along and we will see you on the back nine <laughs>